Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings. A slightly odd day today. I've just decided to refill the bird feeders. So I brought in the mealworm holder and I topped it up and all the mealworms exploded out of the bottom and went all over my countertop and the floor and everywhere else. So that was fun. This is the last of the Christmas 2021 videos. You can see there's still lights up and today is Wednesday the 5th so it's 12th night tonight so all the decorations are going isn't that sad but by the time you see this of course it'll be the 6th and so these will have gone but you won't know that because I've had to record it today anyway today what am I doing I'm doing something daft uh, Bart some time ago gave me a whole load of pens and pencils and interesting things but he also gave me a Bruva T Nazumi now you may not know what that is because I certainly didn't till I opened the package so I'm going to be talking about that at the same time as looking at this package from Alice my favorite verger you've no idea what I'm talking about well let's get on to it then okay folks a little bit of history when I started selling computers back in the 80s, I used to carry this with me every single day. One of the original Dan Leatherman pen knives. Here we go. A Leatherman tool, US trademark, etc. It's got a ruler. It's got a number of different devices. So it's got a handy screwdriver, an awl, a file pliers which are really effective so long as you don't mind hurting your hand on the sharp edges and it's got a knife as well it is a convenient little thing to carry around with you and this used to be on my belt every day for 15 or 20 years as you can see it suffered a bit it also ended up being a plaything for a Bernese mountain dog puppy who chewed holes in it but uh, it still survived it's fantastic and then I found this at a little market which is a Spyderco pen knife and it's wonderful it's a good firm locking blade it's really effective it's now illegal in the UK to carry one of these with you because any kind of locking knife which is the only safe kind of knife to use is illegal to have on you unless you've got a specific reason for it so now the only type of pocket knife you can carry is an old-fashioned slip joint like this which is wonderful I do love that knife it has got one minor failing which is compared with this horribly cheap New Zealand knife made by Svord it's not so easy to get in and out because this you can open and shut one-handed which makes it enormously handy but enough of that what was in this box well it says here it's a Bruva T Nazumi I've no idea if that's anything like the correct pronunciation and I'll apologize to anybody Dutch who's listening because I've almost certainly got it wrong but it says this Nazumi is made from titanium and has a carbide edge it's the carbides that do the cutting if you haven't need to sharpen it just sharpen on the beveled edge nowhere else right that's fine and Jerry Brewer is the first Dutch knife maker to ever design a spider co like this which is not the Brewer but is another spider co pocket knife I do like Spydercos. They are very efficient and the blades are fantastic. So what is in this little package? Oh look! It is a mini sheath knife. Now you can see here right, titanium is wonderful because it's very strong, it's robust but it's light. This little knife is made and it's got these carbide elements here at the edge of the blade and when you sharpen it you just sharpen this beveled edge and it makes for an enormously sharp superb cutting edge now this was given to me by Bart and I am enormously grateful Bart it's made by Jerry Brewer 
I think his name is. In fact, it's got his sign there. It is light. It's wonderful to take out camping or anything. You can hold it in its sheath upside down if you want to and it won't fall out. It's a very good robust sheath. The handle is made from some kind of string that's covered in... I'm guessing here, but I would imagine it's some sort of epoxy resin perhaps. It's something that makes the string still grippy so it doesn't slip out of your hand. If it gets wet it's still going to be perfectly easy to hold but it doesn't feel um, smooth and plastic like most epoxy resins would so I, I'm not sure what exactly it is covered in but I think because of its hardness it probably is an epoxy resin of some sort. The blade's got this nice little cutout for your forefinger to rest and little ridges for your thumb to go. And it makes for an extremely effective blade and knife. Now, of course, pen knives, pocket knives as they're now called, have been around for donkey's years. Why? Well, luckily, my friend Alice, the verger from London, has given me some things so I can demonstrate what pocket knives were for. These are all... Any more? Yeah, there's a few more in there. These are all wonderful genuine Thames Canadian goose feathers. She sent me this little card. I'm not going to let you see what's on the, on the card because it's got an address on it. They had an extraordinary molting season last year, if that, and there were some really good flight feathers around. Look at that. She thought the master of medieval crime fiction would enjoy making quills out of them, and she enjoyed seeing the process. She enjoyed looking forward to seeing the process. Well, I thought, wouldn't it be fun? to see if I could make a quill out of one of these using a knife that had been sent to me by Bart. So I'm going to pick the quill that has the biggest end. Now, I have never made a quill in my life. It's one of those things I've thought about trying many times, but it's one of those things that I've just never got round to, really. So this is going to be potentially an enormously embarrassing video. Take a cup of tea just to give me some liquid strength, liquid courage. Now, I don't think quills were cut terribly uh, they weren't cut in exactly the same manner by every potential user. So I'm going to try my route and see what happens. So here we go with the first cut. I think... Whoops. That they would normally cut it flat across the top like this, hopefully. <laughs> now that's given me a particularly bad shaped quill. As you can see, it's got a pair of horns coming down, so I need to trim that. And of course, this is what pen knives were for. They were for helping you to form your pen. Ah, didn't know that, did you, eh? No, ah, well, there you go. So let's just Trim this nice and neatly, or as neatly as I can. I have no idea if this is going to work. And then I think they would have cut... ...tines, ah, if I can, to make the feather work as a pen. 
Hmm, I think I've already messed this up completely, sadly. Not the fault of the pen knife, or the uh, knife. Entirely the fault of the in incompetent twit trying to use it. So let's just try to refine this a bit. It's a little bit better, I think. I'm going to take it a bit more off this side. I'm being very careful here, you'll notice, trying to make sure I don't spray bits of quill into my cup of tea. So I don't think that would add to the flavour of my tea. Now that's not so bad. That looks moderate, I think. How does that feel? That feels alright. The only trouble I've got now is I'm not convinced that it will work without having some tines cut, without having the uh, end of the nib cut into two tines. So I'm going to use an, an actual pen knife to see if I can just cut up here. And I can't. It doesn't want to do that. Let's just try to take off the top here and tidy it up. I apologise for the dog snoring. It's the one thing she's particularly good at. Now there must be some way of getting that to work. But perhaps it doesn't need to have two tines. Perhaps that's only necessary when you're using a fountain pen. So I'm now going to see, does this work? Put the knife away. Thank you again, Bart. Thank you again. Oh, that's odd. No, that feels right. Thank you again to Alice. Now we have some black fountain pen ink. All I need now is a little bit of paper. Always somewhere close by and always underneath a pile of other junk so I can't quite get to it with ease. Hey ho, here we go. No, nope, that's not gonna work. Um, oh, here we go. This is dreadful paper, but it doesn't matter. It was actually free because it was on a, a time when cult pens were doing a special offer. So it's an Atoma notebook. Here is some Conway Stewart black ink. Let's see what happens. Now I have to admit that is horribly scratchy, but oh, the winter red hemp made glorious. That's right. works really surprisingly well. No tines. Just... Now the great thing about that is, yes, it is irregular, so you can see here that um, where I've just filled it, this paper soaks up the ruddy ink like blotting paper, it's dreadful. It is very cheap paper. But the nib is really surprisingly good. That, that works astonishingly well. is 
Isn't that astonishing? Well, there you go. I've actually cut my first quill. Pen. Quill. Thing. <laughs> and I have many more here to play with. I would never have thought it would be that easy. Well now, there you go. One really brilliant knife, thanks ever so much to Bart. And my first opportunity to play with a goose feather to make a quill. And it worked enormously. Well, I am really impressed with that. Very surprised and really impressed for something with no tines to be able to write that accurately. And yes, it is rubbish paper, I know that. You can tell when I pull it out and show the reverse, the ink really did soak through very badly. But it's dirt cheap paper, well it was free paper, so who am I to complain? I'm not. I'm a happy person. I stay happy. It's always good that it's good to be happy. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Next time you see me, there will not be fairy lights all over the place. And we'll be back into the new year. What will we be doing? I'll probably next time be looking at a new pen I've been given recently, a narwhal. Looking forward to that. But in the meantime, if you're interested in using your own pens and paper, don't forget the Writerly Witterings Pen Pals Club. If you go to the bottom, into the uh, top of the comment section, you'll see that there is an email address. If you write to me there, I'll send you a link so that you can get through to the Pen Pals Club. Quite astonishing how well it's expanding. There's a hundred odd people now and the number of people joining is increasing weekly. Um, so anywhere in the world, doesn't matter where you're from, if you want to write to other people and make use of your pens, that's the place to go because it gives you a chance. I'll be able to give you access to a whole bunch of names and addresses of people who would like to hear from you. Make new friends, people who are interested in pens. What more can you ask for, really? Don't forget, if you haven't already, subscribe, hit the bell button so that you get notified when there's a new video. Any comments at the bottom, I normally respond within a couple of days. It depends on work. Um, work just now means... This is the first draft of book seven for Jack Black Jack, so I am quite busy. But if you'd like to support the channel, you, there's a Patreon link as well. You can do all the things you know, like it, share it, run down the streets waving your hands in the air, screaming how good it is, all that sort of stuff, you know. And in the meantime, thanks a lot. Happy New Year and speak to you soon. Cheers.